Hey everybody, it's Captain Nabs here with you once again with the fifth episode of my E-175 tutorial. In the first four episodes, we got the airplane ready to go flying. So in this fifth episode, we're going to finally get this airplane actually moving. So we're going to do the final steps of the before start process that happened immediately before we actually start uh, the engines. We'll actually do an engine start and a pushback and uh, we'll conclude with some taxiing. So hop on aboard and let's get this airplane finally moving. All right, so here we are back in the flight deck again. We've done all of our flows overhead. We've done uh, our flow through the pedestal. We've set up our MCDU. Everything is basically ready to go. So at this point, we would of course get our ATC clearance and make sure we do a departure briefing. I'm not gonna go through that because you should know how to do one already. And if you don't, there's probably a thousand examples out there. Once our departure briefing is, do is done, we just have to wait for the loading to complete and get our final numbers before we can actually push back. If we haven't already done so, we should make sure that the APU does start at this point so that we can get the ground power taken off and we're ready for pushback in that respect. While the APU is starting, hopefully our final numbers come in, we'll make sure that they are correct. Usually the load changes a little bit uh, at, at the final numbers. So we're gonna make sure that we update our perfinite page. Number two, to ensure that our ZFW is correct and our takeoff C of G is also correct. We'll also need to verify that our takeoff thrust setting is correct and that our takeoff performance numbers are correct. Depending on the airline you work for, you may end up getting takeoff numbers uh, directly from their performance calculator or you may just end up using numbers from the FMS. The final step of setting up our takeoff performance data on the Embraer 175 is to set our stab trim to the correct setting for takeoff. This depends on our center of gravity and our flap setting. If you use a performance calculator, it may generate the stab trim setting for you, but if you don't, you can use a stab trim setting card, like the one I've attached to the normal checklist listed in the description of this video. For today, we have a C of G of about 21%, and we're using flaps one, so you can see the card here indicates 3.5 up. So that's what we'll set right now before we start the engines, and we'll recheck it again just after start. Just a quick note, I made a minor error when I was originally filming this video. The original CFG when I was filming this video was 19%, so I actually used the 4.0 up value for the stab trim, and you'll see that later in the video, so I apologize for that. But normally you would set your stab trim based on the CFG currently in the system and the card here. Now that the APU is up and running, we can go ahead and disconnect our ground power. Always make sure that before the ground power is disconnected, you make sure the button's pushed out so that even if uh, something happens to the APU and it tries to start drawing ground power again, uh, it can't do that and it won't uh, injure any of the ground personnel trying to remove the ground power plug. So now that we are fully ready to go, we're gonna call ATC to get our pushback clearance. And once uh, we've been given our pushback clearance, we have a simple three-step flow before we do our checklist and commence our pushback. So the simple three-step flow, assuming you got clearance to push, is to make sure that the electric pump 3A goes on, the red beacon goes on right next to it, and the transponder goes on, T-A-R-A. -A. And then you call for the before start checklist below the line. Doors and windows closed and locked, so verify on the MFD that all the doors are indicating closed. Make sure the flight deck door is closed, that the flight deck windows are closed. So they're closed and locked. Hydraulic pump 3A on, we did switch it on. Red beacon on, we did switch it on. Transponder, T-A-R-A. It is in uh, T-A-R-A, and emergency park and brake as required. So uh, if we're doing a normal pushback, we'd release at this point. If we were doing some kind of an open ramp operation where we'd just be starting the engines parked here on the ramp and taxing away ourselves, we'd leave it on. So in this case, brakes off, and we are ready for pushback. So we've indicated to our pushback crew that we are ready for pushback and that the brakes are released, and they'll give us the push here. Once we start our push, we can start our engines. The engine start in the Embraer 175 is very simple. We'll normally start engines one and then two, and it's a fully automated process with its own protections through the FADEC, so all we need to do is just monitor it and make sure that it does proceed correctly. Lift the cover on engine one, rotate the start-stop selector to the run position, and then hold it at the start position for about one second. It's spring-loaded back to run, and then just keep your hand on it and monitor the start conditions. Make sure rotation does start. Make sure we do start to show some oil pressure shortly. And we should have light off within 30 seconds. If we get any conditions that we don't like with the start, uh, whether we get uh, no rise in oil pressure, we get a hot start or a hung start, 
uh, we can immediately move the start-stop selector to the stop position. But everything with the start process is fully automated in the 175. The bleed system will cut off the packs automatically and turn them back on once the start process is complete. The generators will come on automatically. The hydraulic systems will cut in automatically. All you're looking for is stable parameters at the end of the start process. So we should see about 20 to 21 percent on the N1, about 60, 55, 59 to 65 percent on the N2. And uh, we should have oil pressure at the end of the start process. So we've got some pretty stable values here. That looks good. We can close that cover and start engine two. Again, watch the parameters for the start. We should see N2 increase. We should see oil pressure increase. We should normally see the ignition kick on before the fuel flow at about 15%. Uh, we should see the ignition kick on. Fuel flow above 20%. Normally in the start, you won't get any hydraulic low pressure warning. So this is a bit of a bug in the simulation right now while we're still in the early access model. All right, the pushback is complete. We can set the parking brake and give our ground crew the wave off. So once our ground crew is all clear and they give us a thumbs up, we do a quick two-step process before we do our after-start checklist. So we call for a flap setting for takeoff. So set flaps one and we do a flight control check. Full up, full down, full left, full right, and with the rudder as well, full left and full right, making sure that we do have the steer off still indicated when we do that. Normally the steer off would still be indicated until we press the handle after the start process. You don't need to see full deflection on a control for it to be considered valid as long as the control does move in the correct direction. It doesn't have to completely fill the box for it to be considered a valid test. And then at this point, you would call for the after start checklist. After start checklist, ground equipment is removed. Takeoff trim. 4.0 up set, zero, zero. Slat flap, one set. Flight controls, checked. And APU can go off. Normally we let the APU run for about 30 seconds after we finished an engine start, just to make sure that there's no electrical transients uh, if the APU is cut off too soon. At this point, we're ready for taxi. You call for your taxi clearance. Release the par parking brake. Clear left, clear right. And you can put the taxi light on as well. And give it some power and away we go. Depending on the weight in the Embraer, the Embraer sometimes will roll on its own as soon as you release the brake. It is a very light aircraft for the most part. When you're talking about full fuel and heavier weights, it sometimes does need a little power to get going. But for the most part, it will get going pretty well on its own. So that's it for today's video. It was a pretty straightforward startup of the engines. On the next video, we're going to do the before takeoff checklist and actually go through the takeoff procedure. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys all next time.